fantastic. So how are you doing, Beauty Queen? <laughs> that was years ago, Bola. I know, 2004. Is that it? Yes, 2004. Mm. Amazing, amazing and, and, and good to know. And uh, so what, 16 years ago? Wow. Yes, anyway. sir. Years was ago, that, was, you, was, you still was have that? part, No. Mm -hmm. You, you, still, you still have to play the part. You know, once a queen, always. <laughs> so um, definitely, I'm carrying that, you know, crown. Definitely. I mean, once a beauty queen, always a beauty queen. And you look at I think that now, even if you go back and uh, you go and compete, you, you'll still place first. Or what do you think? You think you're still... Turning 40. Why would you put me on blast? Why would you... <laughs> Because I want, I want the world to bring presents to your doorstep. I want when next year, on the 20th of March, you wake up in the morning, you know, you have loads of presents. Won't you welcome I'm, that? I'm still trying to register all of that. Like, 39 years already. 40 next year. I can't believe it. Well, God has been good, huh? God has been amazing. Um, I think it's just been an amazing journey so far. Right. And it's just getting better. Um, it's, it sometimes gets tiring, but, um, you know, once you get the work done and you see the outcome is always fulfilling. So I'm not really complaining. It's just, um, wow. I'm going with the flow and I'm loving every step of it. Well, thanks so much for taking time off your busy schedules. I mean, I look at your profile Thank every time and I'm inspired. And I know many young ladies out there are also inspired, most especially because for me, Looking at you being an entrepreneur, a beauty specialist, a mother of two, you 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 juggling, you know, between being a wife, being a mother, going to work, and, and still being caring and being there for your fans is amazing. Walk us through first, Minai. How are you able to juggle all these activities and still remain sane, sound, and open to all? How do you do this? What's the secret? I think, you know, um, a lot of people think it's just the individual that, you know, manages everything because all, all they see is the glam. They see right. now, they see her business is thriving. They see um, everything else but what goes on behind the scene. But I've been blessed to have such a solid team. Mm. Um, they get me. You know, it's always very important to work with people that are passionate about what you do you know and um they are just amazing and of course i have a very solid family support system right. at home um you know there's a husband there's the parents my family's brothers sisters you're always there for me so regardless of you know when you have a stressful day you know that there's love there's support you know and that's what has been able to sustain me up till now Fantastic. It's all about the love and uh, family support. But let's yeah. go to meet you, Manai. You, 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 you're a Canadian. You're a Ghanaian. Born Canadian. Ghanaian. <laughs> I am. <laughs> right. have, yeah. you, have you renounced your... Born... Me a Ghanaian. You're a woman. I'm going to say, 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 <laughs> okay. 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 Oh, of course. Okay. 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 Oh, good to know. So certainly, so, certainly it, you're Ghanaian. I almost have to convince people because when well, my, my complexion, I'm really pale. And right. I have to work on, a, you know, tanning for me to look darker mm -hmm. or get a nice brown complexion. And see, a lot of people would always question you know the facts. So are you sure you're really Ghanaian? Not Ghanaian, like the ones that know me, but when you're outside, right. are you sure you're Ghanaian? And then I'll say something in you know Chia, they're like, oh, okay, <laughs> interesting. Right. So which, which 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 high school which high school do you go to? Morning Star, Morning oh, Star. Oh, Morning Star. That's around where Laboni. With Jocelyn, with Alexandria, so all the celebs now, they all went to Morning Star. So Morning Star has produced some great, great celebrities, right? And great people. Who went to Morning Star? Yes. Come again. Who Ms. who went to Morning Star? Jocelyn Dumas. Joseph Adu went to Morning oh, Star Joseph as well. Oh, of, 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 okay. All right. Yes. Was he your mate? 
No, he was a year or two ahead of me. Right. So from Morningstar, then you went to where? And then I um, left Ghana. I, I lived in Boston for a little while and then moved back to Canada, Toronto. Right. And then you moved to Canada. So tell us about it. I mean, that must have been, what, age, age 13, 14? What time did you move? About 14 when I moved to Boston. So um, I completed my high school in Boston. Okay. Boston, my and then went on to Toronto um, to university. So I was in Canada for about four years and I came back home. Um, after graduating from university, that's when I got into pageantry. And oh. I think my life changed after that. So I went from studying marketing to becoming a beauty queen. But obviously the um, education helped because everything that I do involves marketing. and. Um, in terms of my projects, I'm very creative and I'm able to market it the best way that I can. Well, you know, a lot of us first got to, I saw you in the Ovation magazine way back in 2004 oh. when, you were, when you were crowned Miss Universe, you know, Ghana. But yes, we first met you as a young lady, you know, getting into pageants. What created the desire? You know, yes, we know you're beautiful. Yes, we know you're intelligent. But with the confidence and all of that, what really pushed you to get into beauty pageants? I think, well, after graduating from university, and I think a lot of women will agree, well, a lot of people will agree after graduating from school is, what do you do next? You know, and I said to myself, I'm going to give, you know, myself about a year to figure things out. And my sister's friend, you know, knew the national director in charge of Miss Universe Ghana. So she said, wow, you're very beautiful, very tall. What do you think of pageants you know i'm like well um i need to lose some weight <laughs> <laughs> oh so you went into you went into beauty pageant of miss universe to lose weight no no no, that no. I actually, or that motivated you to lose weight not necessarily to lose weight to compete but you know there's a criteria obviously right. when you know you are in a pageant you need to look a certain way um right. there are different you know, pageantries, you can do plus size pageants, but I mean, for Miss Universe is a criteria. So, I mean, you had me four years buried in my books, always in my glasses. I, I was a nerd, um, eating burgers on campus, not really what, taking what, care what of What happened to your spectacles? You ditched them? I still wear my glasses, but they're super cool now. I'm cool. <laughs> right, right, so, right. Oh, my hood and... I was so antisocial in school. It was all about my books, in and out. Right. You know, so, so I mean, it was... Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. No, it, it was so funny. So, because people that I went to school with, you know, saw me after the pageant. They are like, I'll be damned. You look really good. <laughs> it was just like a caterpillar blossoming into a butterfly. It was like, wow, there's hope for us, you know. Um, but I had to go through that process and prepare myself for the international pack. So it right. was not, you know, graduating and then getting into the pageant. So let's talk, let's talk about the international pageant. Yes, you won Miss, you know, Universe Ghana in 2004, represented Ghana at the international level. Yeah. How was that, how was that experience like, you know, being a young girl out of college? coming on to become a beauty queen, now on that international platform representing Ghana? I think, you know, our country, we take it very lightly because we just see, you know, they, we, we just think it's just a beauty pageant, so let's not invest in it. But as a beauty queen, you know, you're the ambassador of the country because you're going out there to represent your country. And you're almost like a, um, a walking billboard. Whatever, you know, Ghana has to offer, you're the one communicating with the rest of the world. So um, it was almost, um, I wasn't really prepared, but I learned a lot when I got there that, look, this is not just a beauty pageant, but this is something, you know, you're, you're more than just a beauty queen, you're an ambassador. So right. I learned as I got, you know, things, um, I, I, I actually learned when I was there, you know, that mm -hmm. communicating this is who you are. You need to represent your country the best way you can. And then I, things got better when I came back to Ghana. <clears throat> so I got very serious with the um, title, and I did a lot of charitable work. I used that platform.
going to do good. And I realized that beauty will open the door for you, but it's what, you know, comes out after that matters. Right. So I master that. So I, most yeah. importantly, you encourage a lot of ladies to go into beauty pageants, despite the backlash that people feel that, well, it, it's not really a cool thing to get into pageants. People have, yeah. you know, raised moral concerns and clearly they, they look down on people or they disdain people who get into pageants. Would you encourage young ladies to participate in pageants in general? Yeah, definitely. And that is one of the reasons why I took the franchise for Miss Universe Ghana because it opened, uh, that organization opened a lot of doors for me and I wanted to do the same for the next generation. You know, um, you have a lot of um, amazing women out there. Oprah Winfrey was once a beauty queen. You know, so, but not a lot of people know that. So um, it's definitely an opportunity for all the young women, especially Ghanaian women, to get involved because it's like, it's almost a transformation for you as the individual. You get to know a lot about yourself and um, build your confidence level. Great. Now, let, let's get into you being, you know, that top celebrity out there. Of course, you, 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 you <laughs> were pretty much, before, before you met... A, a, a top footballer, Sule Muntari. Where, where did you guys meet? For the first time, what do you hear this exclusive news? How did you meet Sule well, Muntari? I've told you this before. Yes, yes. How um, did you meet him? You're so naughty. Uh, we met in Germany. This was during the World Cup. So um, I think... So that, that must be Germany 2006? Yeah. Okay. And he actually walked up, he walked up to me and he wanted my autograph because he heard I was... Oh, Sule Mutari wanted your autograph? Mm-hmm. Oh, was it, was it a pickup line or really genuinely, he saw know. you as a star, as a beauty queen yeah. and he wanted your autograph? Which is which? No, he actually heard from my cousin that I was um, Miss Universe, I was a reigning queen at that time. So he walked up to me and you know something, he had me sign his t-shirt one orange t-shirt that he kept for years wow yeah he he had he he hardly washed that t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> interesting interesting yeah, so, as for my autograph yes he did hello chief chief dele chief, I... chief, chief dele momudu chief dele I... has just joined us oh, we're paying our, our respect to chief dele momudu I, I believe that he has a question for you he's one of the first people to have featured you in, in his Plus magazine and celebrated magazine Ovation magazine. So that is a publisher of Ovation magazine, right? Yes, please. Dele, I, know, please. I know later on you like to pay tribute to him. Yes, no, he I actually my people, yes, Chief. <laughs> I actually walked into his office. I was like, Chief, hi, I've heard a lot about you. I'm the reigning queen. Please put me on your cover. Oh, <laughs> just, oh so that's how it happened. You're meeting with Jelly Momo, do you walk to his office? Oh yes, I was. I'm so very driven and forceful. I I get what I want. So I I you know had this puppy dog face on. Chief, please. He's like, sure. You're, you're my sister. <laughs> and I mean, trust Chief, trust Chief Jelly Momo for that any day. He's going to be our yeah. guest, you know, sometime soon on IG Live Combo with Bola. So certainly he's going to share his amazing story with us. Hello, Chief, and and, and nice to know that awesome. you joined us. Good to know. So yes, the Sule Muntari story. He, he, he yes. signed his T-shirt for him, and then he started toasting you. Oh no! It... <laughs> Did you say he started toasting me? Yes. <laughs> what is what's that? What's toasting? Toasting. Oh, but you know, in Ghana they will say he started calling you. Oh, uh, oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, you say oh, yes. I'm your friend. I just want to be your friend. I was like, okay. Um, no, but um, we started talking. We talked for about eight months, and so he thought we were dating. But I said, you know what? Let me take my time. I, I kind of had this little thing for him, so I needed to take my time. Was it know? was it love at first sight for Sule Mutai? Yes. For him, what did you tell me? No. For him, yes, but for you, no. No. Are you sure about this? So you you had to trust me. Stretch him for like eight months. Taking the long haul for eight months before you thought to, you were dating. I wanted to go longer, but Charlie. Eight months. Mm. The man is very persistent and he kept on <laughs> pressing. 
Yeah. Why, why did it take you that long? Why did it take you that long, Benay? Because I wasn't like, oh, why did it take me? Or why did he, why was you it? You, take, take, take you eight months to say, yes, I want to date you. Why eight months? Um, you know what? I'm a very old-fashioned girl. And I believe that a man needs to court you. You know, it's, there is that, you know, one thing and one thing only, you know, it leads to that. And then what? <laughs> What is that yeah. one thing only? Ah, it's still daytime. <laughs> I'll, I'll save that for after hours, okay? Okay. No, mm -hmm. but I mean, you you have to get to know the person, and I'm very old fashioned. Like I, okay. um, I like long phone calls. You know the dates here and there, all of that. You know, and, and I think you you get to know the person more, so you you build a friendship before you get into a proper relationship, and that's what I wanted. Um, he was persistent. He, and I think for him, I was not like every other girl. Because Correct. he was be, you know, being a football player, he had it very easy. The girls would like, all the hot girls, like chanting his name, Sule Muntari, he didn't have to work. So for him, it was a challenge. And I think he liked that. Ever a time in, in your life that, you know, you have to fight with other women or another woman? Oh, yes. Oh, ah. yes. Oh, yes. Wow. Um, how, how, was, how was it like? How, were the women texting him? Were they coming to him at home? Or maybe sometimes he's in Italy and you are here and you go back and hear stories, so you have to fight. What was it? I'm it was bringing back some memories, eh? Sorry. I, you know, I, I had to see for myself. So there are times when this was years ago. Right. Um, now I'm so busy, I don't even pick up his phone. Like, I'm so busy. I have the kids. I have my work. So <laughs> this this was when the love was like fresh, you know. <laughs> You're like, excuse me, who is wow. texting? Who texted us? You mm -hmm. know. But um, yeah. So you'd see a, a missed call or a text, and you, one one girl had sent a, a picture. You know. Okay. I was like, hey, excuse me. You know. He's it like, was it, was, it a nude, was it a nude picture? No, no, no. no. But okay. it was, you know, yeah, he was trying, she, she was trying mm -hmm. to get somewhere, you know, but and I was like, um, bro, what's what's going on? And the funny thing is, it's like, I don't even know her. I, I swear to me, and I call her back. <laughs> you, oh, you, you made him call her back? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Wow. Was, wasn't that pushing the button to far why why do that if you no. trust your mind you believe why do you think that you should call well, the other lady this back was for you? younger this is when i was younger this is when okay. the love was fresh all those like you're 23 24. yeah yeah yeah, yeah but it, you know we've, we've been through it all and we've evolved together we're, we're mature we're adults we have a family so Wait, were, you at any are... point, were you at any point scared that this is the famous Sule Montari, Ghanaian superstar, great footballer, nice guy, that a lady would take him away from you. Did you ever feel that? Or how about that? Ever? Be sincere, be candid. Nope, never. Never. Come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> really? Never. And you know what? I always believe, okay, if the relationship is meant to be, it would be, but would so you're, be, yeah. mm. he, he, one time he's like, have you ever cried for me? I said, no, baby, why should I cry for you? You know, there's no need to cry for you when the love is solid, when there's that respect, you know, um, not at any point in time was I worried that, you know, I would lose him. And if I did, you know, it, it, it would mean that the relationship wasn't meant to be, but right. Are you are you a good cook? Can you cook to save your life? Oh yes, I I can really cook. Right. I can. I actually made um, banquan okra soup one oh. time for him oh. and his cousin. It was him a Samoa John? They were like, "Hey, Bruni, <laughs> stop!" Wow. Wow. Yeah. Who, who's his, who's his best friend? Sule. Um, he is, um, someone that just, he's a chilled person, so he doesn't have a best friend per se. He's usually at home. Okay. He has a 
coaches, he, from you know his colleagues and um, people that he's played, um, guys that he's played football with. But he doesn't have best friends. I think now his best friend is his son, Jamal. Wow, Jamal. And that takes <laughs> us to the family. Becoming a mother for the first time, what was working through your mind? Here will be your mates, you know, who will say, well, why do you get married that early? You still have life ahead of you. Early. Did you, yeah, did you, did, you, did you push to, and were you wishing to become a mother at that stage? Or you thought, okay, maybe let me be 35 before I give birth, or you really wanted to do that? Mm. Um, it just happened, you know, because oh. there was a lot of pressure, you know, in our culture, you get married and people just automatically expect you to have children. Right. So um, <laughs> we got married and a year later, my mom is like, okay, what's happening? You know, then your aunties will call your friends and then the social media would not let you rest. You're constantly, you know, on your case. Um, they come up with all these stories about your relationship and apparently I didn't want to have kids because I didn't want to lose my figure, a whole bunch of stuff. But um, when I got pregnant, I was really happy. I think I knew that I was going to be a hands-on mom, which I am, and mm -hmm. everything else wouldn't matter anymore. So um, it was like a life-changing experience for me. I would not have asked for anything better than this it was it's just amazing being a mom they come first in everything that i do wow. um so after marriage after marriage it took it, 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 it took how many years for you to have jamal four, four, four years four years and you know our cultural setup and all of that did you get people budging in and asking you when is the child coming when and did that get you worried as well as today no. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, mm. Not at all. But I was extremely happy when it happened. I was very confused because I didn't know how um, how things would change. But I, I embraced it. I think it's all part of nature, how God created this whole process. The mother just automatically adopts to the change. You know, that's mm. what happened to me. Um, right. That's view with Jamal. And that's when I just started working on my skincare line. So I was pregnant. I had Jamal, went back to work, and I would literally breastfeed my son in meetings. <laughs> in meetings? You used to breastfeed your, your son in meetings? Yeah. In yeah. Ghana, As many, many, many would have criticized you for that. But of oh, course, yeah. out there, they were okay. Yeah. Well, they didn't have a choice because I was paying them, right? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> in their suits and they're sitting there rolling their eyes you know that they can't stand you know like the situation was very uncomfortable for them but right. i wouldn't tell with a nap so you know they had to deal with the whole situation sure sure anyway so so you are a christian your husband is a muslim again one great you know union and you are sending a strong message to people out there that regardless whatever it is you can coexist how are you able to do this flawlessly? How are you able to push it? You know, it's um, it's something we, we did discuss it when we first met. And, you know, what he said was, I mean, my, my parents never had a problem with it. Um, his parents, and it was about coming together, creating a beautiful union, um, stealing it with amazing kids. And that's what really matters. I mean, at the end of the day, um, is what you put out there in the universe, you know, that matters. You know, a lot of people get caught on religion, 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 but at the end of the day, are you doing what is right? I believe in, for me as a Christian, are you doing what is Christ-like? Is not, are you a Christian? You have to go to church every Sunday. What are you doing as a Christian, you know? So, and then for him, it's what he's doing as a Muslim. So if it's, you know, you're not harming others, you're doing what is right. I think it should never be a situation in any relationship. Fantastic. And you're, you're doing that so well. So are you raising the kids as Christians? Are the children being raised as Muslims? What is that to know? How, how you, do they go to church or they go to the mosque? Um, they go to church with me. They go to mosque with me. Um, are you not confusing them? You know? <laughs> Why? They we're, go we're to church, to, they go to the mosque. We're raising them to be good human beings. That's what matters. Mm. That's mm. what matters. As I said before, 
So you, you can go to church, you can go to the mosque, and then what? And then right. it's raising them to be great citizens, raising them to be great human beings. Mm -hmm. um, that's, what, that's what matters to us, rather than forcing religion on them. I like, I, like, I like that, and I think that is a great example and, you know, a great call for many to say that love conquers all. I mean, and if you love somebody, you love their religion, you respect them. And thanks so much for sharing that. Many, oh, Ohima Ya says that I love this woman. She's just great. Mami Sewa says that great human beings. Oh. Ohima Marshall, thank you very much. We're giving you pizza from Edis Pizza as well, and also... You know what, I Menai? I'm going to put you on the spot. Bosporus in Laboni, they've been kind enough to actually give us their place, a very plush VVIP room. I want you to have dinner with 10 of their colleagues or, I mean, viewers that we select on Instagram Live for you to be at Bosporus with them. Are you going to welcome that? Yes, but do they have anything vegan? <laughs> yes, they do. They do. They do. They do. So don't worry. They you do. Know it's so funny, right? Um, I post my, you know, all the recent pictures that I posted on my Instagram um, platform, or well, my Instagram page. Yes. Uh, comments here and there like, like, hey, she's putting on weight too. What's going on? <laughs> Not knowing that I'm losing the weight. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. That was yeah, way, way back, you know, pictures. Because you just, your, your daughter is called? Jamila. Jamila is so adorable. I've seen her pictures and she looks very much like Sule Montari. You think? Oh, yeah, so I think you're a mom as well. Yeah. I yeah. saw her and she's very, she's very tall. I mean, knowing that she's about to turn one, you know, <laughs> you huge and, you know, great and all of that. Anyway, yeah. Mami Sewa, you just won yourself, you know, uh, a box of pizza as well. Ketsi Eddie's Pizza. We're also taking some of you to Bosporus. And also Launcher is our proud sponsor right here as well. I'm convo with you know, Bola. And we're chatting with the sweet, delectable, fabulous, beautiful, gorgeous. Oh. I see you're blushing. Yes. Oh. Menai Donko. <laughs> yes. So, Menai, share with us, you know, the journey of you acquiring franchise. You know, and, and, and that is very instrumental. You, you go out there, you compete in a pageant. Now you have the franchise to host Miss Universe Ghana. How did you come or learned that? Yeah, um, I think it was um, for me the right time to take the pageant and you know bring it back to life because it was um, an organization that basically changed my life and I felt this was the time for me to come on board to change the perception of what people view you know about pageantry. Um, I needed to change people's minds. I needed to show a different side of it. And I wanted to give the young women, up and coming women, the same opportunity that this organization gave me. And it's been an amazing journey. Um, what I've done is I've created a sisterhood. We're still, you know, all in touch, all my girls, yes. my little sisters. And um, the journey does not end there. It's just you know, beginning for each and every one that has gone through this organization since I um, got the franchise. So it's been amazing, Bola. And thanks amazing, for Amazing indeed, but I know it's been challenging as well, huh? Oh, yeah. Um, mm. But thanks for the support that I want the whole world to know. <laughs> right. Well, we have, to do, we have to do it for one another. You are yeah. a great human being as well, so anytime. But what are some of the challenges as well? As a young lady coming up and going for this franchise and say, look, I'm going to empower a lot more women out there through pageantry. What are some of the challenges? There might be young ladies who look up to you. They want to walk that path. What are the things to know? Well, first of all, they need to learn how to crawl, walk, and run. Mm -hmm. well, a lot of them want to just stand there and just run. It takes mm -hmm. the process. And this is what we, you know, put our girls through. It's, um... We, we have about two months with them, one-on-one, -on -one, with the whole grooming sessions. And this, this helps them a lot to even develop their confidence level. Right. Um, some of the challenges is, you know, they're coming from different backgrounds. There's zero. They have no knowledge about pageantry. And you need to tap into their understanding for you to get to them, you know. And that 
it's sometimes very challenging, but so far, I love every bit of it. We'd like to say hello to Nwanko Kanu, and Kanu is also with us. Um, so we'd like to say, yes, uh, we will we, we, we'll say hi to him. But Mami Sewa says, I'm inspired. And certainly that's what we want to do. We want to challenge a lot more young people out there to know that whatever you put your mind to it, whatever you conceive, you can achieve. And that's what Mina is talking about. Going out there from being a competitor, a winner, and then being a franchise holder. And now you, 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 you are, you know, into a, a lot of things. You're a serial entrepreneur. We'll talk about yes. some of the things that you are, you are doing, you know, your, your beauty line. And also now you're doing, um, is it parts for women? Yeah, I recently launched sanity, this. Sanity parts. And, and that's what you're wearing. I think that let's talk about it some more now. You yeah. know, somebody says you have to be, you have to be an ambassador for Ghana. And that's from Ooh. Daily Boy 66. Mm -hmm. Her social media and, handles. Yeah, can you put your social media handles out? Yes. So it's just at Mine Donkor. Once you follow me, you have all the other social media platforms that you can follow as well. Okay. So yeah. at Mine, you know, you can just follow her. And oh, that's it. Sure. That's yes. Okay. So yeah. let, 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 let's, let's, let's hear, you know, that great story that you want to share. Go ahead. So um, Sincerely by Mine is um, a brand that, you know, again, I got pregnant. I needed to do something. But prior to that, um, during our, um, one, when we go through the grooming sessions with these young ladies for the Miss Universe pageant, um, we do a whole bunch of activities. But I think one thing that stood out to me was we never touched on personal hygiene enough. And this was something that was, you know, very important to me because I said, you know what, you know, we, we live in a country where these young ladies are coming from very humble beginnings. They're, they don't even have the opportunity to talk to their mothers about menstruation. So I wanted them to feel at home, speak to me about everything. And a lot of questions came about, you know, once we started talking about personal hygiene. So for me, it was like this light bulb moment, you know, where they would ask the basic questions about menstruation. <laughs> you know, what do you do when you're menstruating? How often right. do you change that? I can't cook for, or my auntie is not even allowed to cook when she's on her period and X, Y, and Z. So there's all this stigmatization that also um, surrounds menstruation in our culture. So I said right there, you know what? We need to dig deeper and find out what's happening on the market. So I started my market research, I organized some focus groups, and we realized that this is a huge problem. Menstruation in general is a huge right. problem. And the word, so personally, I, I would normally travel and purchase my sanitary pads in, let's say, Europe or America. And I okay. would never buy my pads in Ghana because I wasn't too sure um, the, you know, of the quality. So when we started doing a market research, um, I started to look at different products on the market, which to me was not up to par. So I said, you know what? Ding, ding. As an entrepreneur, <laughs> you always need to find a solution to a, um, right. to a problem. So I just went straight into it, said, this is what we need to do. Um, and it, it, it actually, it's like a puzzle that is like pieces of puzzles that is just coming together. Miss right. you. Stay by Mine with a skincare line, sanitary pads, all has to do with women and children, um, with the school, of course, um, a charity organization. And it just seemed right to, you know, launch this sanitary pad brand and not just provide good quality sanitary pads, but educate the nation, not just the women, but the nation. No, I, think, I think that we should get sincerely, you know, uh, with Mene on board, you know, combo with Bola. I mean, today I want to give out, I feel like giving away some sanitary parts to some ladies out there. So yeah, it's important that we do that and we support our own as well. So yeah. do, you have, do, you have, do, you have, do you have a sample there to show? Just, you have something? Oh, you know, just let me know. Um, let me show you the pad. One second, guys, can you yeah, just- Yeah, just, just, just let us see the packaging and the pads that you it's have. Big, but it's affordable, it's um, high quality, I use, you know, a friend's asking, do you use your pads? Like, yes, of course. I need to ensure that it's, you know, good quality um, before selling it because I'm it, not, it, I'm not says you like to try one and maybe we can make it an ambassador as well. People should talk about sure. it. Let's support our own. 
It's probably made by a Ghanaian, you know, for all of us. Mm -hmm. So you see Abnes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Abnes comment right there. Yeah. So I'll send a care pack to Abna. Um, so these are the oh, two. Oh, I love the packaging. I love the packaging. Really cute. And a lot of people are always worried about the size. They go, you know, um, I'm a heavy bleeder and will this work? Of course. We took all of that into consideration, you know, when we created this. It's very thin, mm. but it absorbs your monthly flow. Um, I'm, going, I'm going to, well, I can't do it now, but I'll do um, a demonstration and post it on my page so you can see how much this absorbs your monthly flow. Um, we wanted to do something very okay. short. Ohima, Ohima, the Ohima Ya also says that I want to support, I'll need one to spread the message. How much, yes. how, much is, how much per pack? I think that with this, you can even get distributors as well. I'm looking at people on campus, even, you know, retailing it. And, 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 and let's support our own. Thank you. Five CD, 50 passwords. Pet, 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 pet. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, good to know. And we say congratulations to you, Minai, for all Thank that you, you, you're doing. I think that is well, it. Mm -hmm. Someone is Go asking, ahead. where can you purchase? So you can purchase them at any shell shop. Um, Palace Mall, Marino Mall, uh, Melcom from Monday onwards, you can purchase um, the pads at any Melcom store. So, in Kumasi, Cape Coast, Takarate, all your Melcom shops, and in, in other pharmacies and supermarkets. I'll share all that information on our page as well. Fantastic, fantastic. So, as we talk about you, certainly, you know, we'll talk about your husband and all of that. I, I, are you ready for him to receive a call up? And is, is he also ready to once again play for the national team, the Black Stars? Is this something that you talk him into it? Yeah, um, you know, at this point, he is enjoying the family. I've never seen him so happy. Um, he is enjoying his kids and just being home. So I really don't, he's, he's talked about it briefly. But it's all about the family and life after football. So you never know. Like life, after, life after football. Does that mean that Sule Muntai won't, won't, well, he won't consider playing for the national team anymore? Now he's a family man. Is that what we're saying? I don't even know. You know the thing about Sule, he is, um, he's unpredictable. Mm. You know, so we never know. He loves Ghana. He you, loves you, you, Ghana. Get, you get the sense. You know him as, as, as a husband, as a good friend. People say Sule is arrogant. <laughs> Sule is quick tempered. Sule doesn't like people. Just don't, Sule mess, just don't mess with him when he's playing football. He's a different. Ah. Ah. And outside football, he's a sweetheart. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. So it's just that don't mess with his game. That's it. That's it. That's mm -hmm. it. Do you see your son taking after him? Does he love to play football? Do you see? And would you encourage him to play football like the dad? Um, we've basically left him to explore. You know, he likes horseback riding. He okay. likes cars. He likes, he likes football. But um, he's, I think, at this stage, you know, you need to let the kid be. You can't really force anything on them. Um, so I think maybe I'm, I'm sure, you know, cause it is in his blood, it's in his DNA okay. so, or at one, at one point and he still doesn't grasp the concept that his father is Sule Mutari, you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> He's just like, okay, mommy, why are they so happy when they see Papa? <laughs> he doesn't get it. You know, mm. he just sees him as Papa and then that's it. So, wow. Yeah. You, you, you are a lifestyle, you know, specialist. You love your beauty stuff, and you love to look good. Who's your favorite hmm. designer? Bola, I'm a tomboy. Who's your favorite designer? I am a tomboy. Yes, regardless. <laughs> you, 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 you rock it well, and you rock the best as well. Yeah, Who is your favorite designer when it comes to clothes? Um, I love Christy Brown locally. Oh, you know, I yes. support mm. our own. Right. Christy gets it you know they're very creative i i always you know make sure that i get you know a few pieces from their collection 